Okay, so let's have a look at how we can create text that floats up whenever you um, pick up a power up. So we need to take some elements from our scrolling combat text. And if you haven't done it already, I would suggest that you go to the scrolling combat text tutorial and you can find the link in the descri description below. And you go through that one to create the project because we'll need the different elements from that project until the end of the of that tutorial series. You don't need to take the last part where we are creating 3D um, but you will need to follow along with that tutorial until the last part at least. That means you, the last part is ex excluded for what you need now, right now. Um, if you have done it already, um, if you have bought the scrolling combat text tutorial maybe, you can simply also just open up that project and copy the, those scripts from there. So let's have a look at how we can do this. If we open up the scrolling combat text um, tutorial um, project, you see that we have this project right here. We have the scrolling combat text. This is inside the folder uh, in my Unity project scrolling combat text. This this is the project folder. In here we have the assets, and we have some scripts and some prefab we will need to add. So if you go to the scripts folder, you'll see there is something called combat text and a combat text manager, and these two we will need to add to our zigzag game. So copy these two into the um, six sec game scripts by dragging them in then we need to go to the prefab and we also need to go to the prefab folder here inside our um, scrolling combat text and in here we need to take the combat text manager and the text prefab and drag them into here so now we have both prefabs and all the scripts that we need so you can basically close your um, folder again okay so let's start setting up our stuff First of all, we will need a new canvas to our game um, so that we can actually see the, uh, the text on the screen because we can't use the same canvas here because the canvas we are going to use is going to be world space and if we would take this one here and change it into world space, our point here in the corner will, will um, disappear. So we need to keep that on screen space overlay. So click and create, select UI and find the canvas. Then you will create a new canvas and you can call it a CT canvas or something. So this is our new canvas. And this is the canvas that we'll need to add our text to in our game. Then you have to go to the prefab folder and you have to take our um, combat text manager and drag it in so that you have that one in your scene. And you can see it, it's missing a script so you can go to your script folder, select the combat text manager and drag it onto here so that the script has been added to the combat text manager. One thing that I forgot to do was to go to the SCT canvas and set it to screen uh, world space here. We'll have to change some scale settings around in a few minutes, um, in a few moments, um, but we'll do that in uh, when we have added some more code. So our combat text manager here, um, we need to set up some things. First of all, we can set the speed to one, for example. Direction, we need to move the text upwards. So Y should be positive one, because this one decides um, what direction to move the text in. Um, and then we need a text prefab and a canvas transform. The canvas transform is a canvas that is the parent of all these texts we are creating. So um, basically that's the SCT canvas we have to drag onto here. And then the fade time, how long should it take for the text to fade out on the screen? You can simply put it at 3 seconds for example. You can always change these values if you want the text to move faster or if you want the text to fade out faster or something like that. Okay, then next thing we need is the prefab. Uh, let's click on the text here and you can see it's missing a script and that script is simply our uh, text script so you can go to the little radio button here and then you can find the combat text script and then you can simply click on that to add that to our um, text prefab. Then we have an animator. We don't need the animation for this uh, type. The animation was for to make critical strikes um, and we don't need that right now so you can simply just uncheck the animator here. Um, you can always put it later if you want to but right now we don't need the animator so just remove it. And right here we have a missing component called animation and we don't need that either. And it shouldn't complain about it. Um, 
yeah if we get a reference exception or something we will simply just remove it from the script but right now just leave it as it is um yeah that's basically what we need right now we can always change these things around because we will need to change them to make it fit our game okay so um what else do we want to do we want to instantiate the text let's let's try to make some mock-up text so when we press the space button the text is going to be written over the player because then we can adjust the size and everything and when we have the correct size and the canvas set up correctly then we can start to add it to our power-ups um, so uh, let's open up a script here let's try to open up our player script and inside our player script we will have to go to our update for example and in here we can make an if statement this is if our input dot get key down key code dot space so if we press the space button we will like to create some combat text um and we can do that by say combat uh, what is it even called combat text manager that instance dot um, create text that's the function we created in the other tutorial to create the text on the screen where we can define the position the size the well, not the size the um, the color and so on so the position is transform that position we want to instantiate it at the player's position um, and the text should be um, let's say plus three because we get three points whenever we um, yeah, when, whenever we pick up a power up and the color well we can make it the same color as our prefab here as our pickup prefab so if we find the materials and select the new material here which is the material for our prefab and we click this one you see that there's a hex color here and there's an RGBA color so 255 4 238 and 255 so let's see 255 for 238 and 255 and we need to create a new color so we can write new color 32 and yeah then we simply have to write 255.4 238 and 255 here yes let me just cover this so it looks a little better um what else do we have here then we have the critical if it's critical or not basically just write false here because we don't need an animation um, this one if it's a long time since you did the scroll in combat text tutorial um, this one indicates if it should be a critical strike so it pops up for the player so it, it's written in lots and then it gets small again so it's like a critical effect and we don't need that try to save and what else what else what else I think that's it. Let's try to run the game <clears throat> and see how it looks. I know the scaling is not going to be correct and stuff. Um, let's try. So we have an unassigned variable um, in the combat text manager. We are missing the text prefab, of course. So click on the text prefab, take the text, uh, I guess, the combat text manager. Here, this is our combat text. Yeah, okay. So take that one and drag it onto your combat text manager here let's try again okay so now you can see the text is written on top of the player here and it follows him so we have those three numbers written on the screen but as you can see they're very uh, not very pretty they're like very pixelated and they're way way too big so let's fix that um, the pixelation and that thing can be fixed by selecting the SCT canvas going to the scale here and writing 0.5 for example, 0.4, let's try 0.4 everywhere. So X, Y and C is 0.4 now. So let's try again. Space and now it's way smaller at least, maybe it's a little too small. Let's try 0 0.5, 0 0.5, apparently I can't hit 5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, so it looks a little better. Let's try to scale up to see how it looks. It's still a little pixelated, so we will need to uh, change some things around to make it non-pixelated at least. So let's see. If we take our text here 
and we change the minimum size to 40 and 40 maybe um, yeah that should do it and then just move it back to the text I thought I was going to see it but I can't see it apparently try here yeah okay so right now it's it's way prettier but it's still too big so you can scale it down so to make it non pixelated you can simply take the minimum maximum size increase them to a larger number and then go to your canvas and decrease the canvas size to a smaller number and this will make it non pixelated when you scale it so the best way of scaling something is by taking the scale of the canvas not taking the scale of the object um, itself so now you can see it's not pixelated and it looks way better now when it goes up but as you can see right now um, they had turned the wrong way these numbers as you can see it's like they're facing this direction where um, downwards um, towards the player they're kind of facing that the player instead we want them to turn around and face um, face us the, the player um, through the screen so we want these um, numbers here to be turned around somehow don't even know if I can find the text to be here. Yeah. So these numbers somehow we want them to be turned. If I can do it here, can't even do it correctly. But we we're going to write some some code that is going to turn these for us so that we can actually see them pointing at the uh, at us instead of uh, having them facing the other way. If you think this looks more fancy, um, if you think this looks better when they're like facing the player like this in the game, then by all means just leave it as that. Um, but let's let's try to change something around so it looks different. Then you can always see if uh, if it's the way you want it. So go to your scripts and go to the combat text script. And in here we need to go to the start function. So public void start without caps lock. And in here we need to write the text for um, actually turning the text around. So to be able to do that, we'll need to know where the camera is because we are going to have the text look at the camera. Um, so you can actually first of all go to the comma text menu before we go there. And then we need to write public transform, uh, cam transform. So this is the camera transform we are going to use um, so that we can actually uh, make the text look at the player. So we are just going to write the cameras transform. And then if we go back to the combat text here, we are going to say transform that look at to multiply it by transform the position minus combat text manager. Um, that's the combat text manager and we need to access the camera transform that instance that camera transform that position. Not camera, but camera trans, cam trans, do that. Um, but position, there we go. Okay, so this basically makes our um, camera look, uh, not the camera, the text look at the camera so we can see it all times or when it spawns. Um, and this is exactly the same thing as we're doing in the 3D part of the scrolling combat text to make sure that when we play a 3D game, that the text is always facing the player so that he will be able to see the text in the game no matter where he is standing. So if you save this and jump back, let's see, we play it now. Oh, wait, we of course forgot to assign it. Now it comes with this unassigned reference. So if we click on the combat text manager, we'll need to give it the camera transform. So go under the player, take the main camera and put it right here. And let's try again. And as you can see now, they're like spawning and they're kind of looking at, at the camera instead. So if we play the game, just not to maximize it, play the game now, you'll see that they're spawning, looking at the camera. So this might look a little weird because, um, because the player is in the middle of the screen, but this is going to look better now when we're going to spawn them on uh, exactly on top of the, of the power-ups instead because then it looks better when they're spawning in the game like this. <clears throat> so let's try to go to the player script. And instead of saying that we want to spawn them, when we press the space button, we'll 
cut this part in the player script and delete the space part. And then we are going to go to on trigger boom, 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 pick up here. When we are done adding score and writing the score on the screen, we are going to call this comment manager instant create text on the player's position. Or basically we're going to do it on the other position. Other to transform the position. Yeah, and then we're going to have the text run up there. Let's try to do this to see what happens. Not sure if the power up gets removed or ah, no, I died already. Let's try again. Apparently, I'm very bad at playing this when I'm talking, so I should just shut up when I do this. As you can see, the text now spawns on the power up and fades away. Guess my play is running a little too fast. I'm very bad at this game apparently. Okay, so now we have the text. You can see that it's moving a little slow. You can always change this if you click on the combat text manager and set the speed up to two, for example. Then instead of the text is like floating slowly at this spot, it's moving upwards a little faster as you can see. But that's up to you how fast you want it to move and how fast you want it to um, fade away. Okay, so that's it for this part of the tutorial. Um, later, I'm going to add some more parts where we are going to create the menu that shows the score and the top score and everything. So it's going to look like the real six side game. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you have any suggestions or comments or something, just uh, throw them in the, in the comment section below or write me an email. Um, usually, if you are interested in this project, you can simply just acquire it through the link in the description below. Um, you can also just support me as a Patreon if you're already doing that. You can simply go to the Patreon page and download all my project. You can download this project and the scrolling combat text and so on, which is um, yeah, a, a, an easier way for you to support me because you just need to do it one time and then you can get everything that I have ever made. Again, thank you very much for watching.